आई लाइक टू वॉश माई फेस विद सी वॉटर मुझे समुद्र के पानी से मुंह धोने का बहुत मन होता है आई लाइक टू फील द सॉल्ट स्प्रे ऑन माई फेस फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम ऐसी इच्छा होती है कि देर तक नमक के थपेड़ों से चेहरे को सेकता रहूं। I often have the urge to speak to them. अक्सर मैं उन सबसे बातें करना चाहता हूं। or speaking to you about uh, our book our journey actually uh, so uh, the the peg of this whole chat is uh, the book that has recently come out which is called i like to wash my face with uh, sea water it's a book of uh, collection of poems that i have translated from the original hindi which was called mitra somitra uh, written uh, by somitra saxena a friend here uh, and for which he won the navlekhan uh, gyanpeet award in 2008 right yes yeah so uh it is a wonderful collection of uh, poetry of poems heartfelt uh soul searching uh metaphysical poetry which i really loved and i was really uh, fortunate to be able to have translated it and uh, in fact this was the first time i translated poetry and uh, it was an absolute pleasure to do it and so somitra and i are going to chat about uh, our work together his poetry my art and a lot of things happening in the world today uh, so somitra welcome to uh, our chat and it is wonderful to have you here uh, you know a lot of people would be surprised about uh, your sort of background i personally wouldn't be because i believe uh, creativity and the artistic pursuit can happen at any time and everyone has that germ inside him or her but um, it can happen to anyone anywhere so i'm not surprised but a lot of people would be curious like how does a engineer who has a phd or who has been deeply uh, immersed in the uh, scientific engineering profession uh, become a poet so i'd like to know where did your journey begin or how did your journey begin uh, as a poet well first of all dheeraj thanks for having me here it's a, a privilege and honor to be on your show and uh, we go along back almost 10 years now and yes. um, uh it it's it's been a great uh, journey knowing you and um, and and learning from you in a way and exchanging ideas yes, so i'm really likewise, fortunate likewise <laughs> yeah so uh, your question is uh, uh, very well taken and i have been asked this questions uh, uh, this question for a very long time so the journey started uh, just like for anyone any artist uh, in early childhood i was fortunate to be um, in in a family where the influence of gopal das neeraj one of the great poets of last century geetkar of last century was tremendous so we used to know him we used to meet him listen to him listen his records so it he was all over our consciousness because he was so he was like a phantom in our family such a big uh, personality and uh, for those uh, who are not really familiar with neeraj you really yes. got to know him he and in my personal opinion he and Harivansh Rai Bachchan they were perhaps the uh, most well known and uh, quite deservedly well known geetkars of last century and uh, their uh, neeraj uh, also uh, uh, wrote for raj kapoor devanand and uh, songs of prem pujari uh, churi nahi ye mera dil hai and uh, um, many of those songs uh, like uh, raj kapoor's e bhai jara dekh ke chalo they were uh, those are iconic him. songs actually iconic uh, songs of, uh, oh. been imprinted on everyone's uh, consciousness absolutely so he has the pleasure of working with sd varman raj kapoor devan and all that cotri and uh, so uh, he was like god in our family and mm-hmm. that's how i started knowing about poetry geet and all that and when i was 10 11 year old i think one thing that happened in my life which really uh, made me sensitive was in 1987 unfortunately there were um, uh, riots in uh, meerut where from where i come 
Right. And uh, I was a 10 year old uh, and uh, my consciousness was shaken at that time. Why this bloodshed? I think uh, uh, identities were hardened at that time as, as they are right now. But right. somehow I, I wanted to quit all identities by that time. When I was 11 year old, I never wanted a tag on my soul or, my, uh, on, uh, or anything associated with me. So somehow it worked on me really differently. And then the progression happened. I started picking up uh, novels by Prem Chand, Yashpa, Mohan Rakesh. And I started building. By the time I was 10, I had perhaps read a lot of work of Prem Chand and all the top novelists wow. and uh, story writers. So that really uh, influenced me. And uh, I want to highlight one important thing. And then, Dhiraj, I will ask you to recite one poem for me. All right. So you have done such a great job in translating that one. But I'll tell you the background of that. The title poem, I like to wash my face with sea water, is actually driven or it is my tribute to my forefathers mm -hmm. and the people who have died over a period of time. Because what happens when we die in Hinduism, we, uh, we disperse our ashes uh, right. or our forefathers ashes in Ganges or Holy River and then they ultimately go to a sea. Mm -hmm. So, when I touch my face with the sea water, essentially I want to feel the souls which have departed previously. So that was the whole idea of that poem, which became the title poem, and in Hindi it's titled as Mitra. Uh, so the origin of that was I was very fortunate uh, when I was 10, 12 years uh, old. I had all four of my grandparents alive, and I was wow. very attached to them. And then all of a sudden, one after other, they, they started passing away. Mm. And um, I remember uh, my grandmother had um, cancer and uh, I used to uh, um, stay in the same room when, where my grandmother was being treated and all that. So I had observed her going from a healthy woman of 75 to right. completely ailing um, uh, person. Uh, who and was, cancer uh, can be so energy. sapping of uh, a person's uh, energy and whole persona changes because of that. Absolutely. And at that time I started writing diary and I still have those diaries and never quit that habit of writing diaries. I, mm -hmm. I have like 50 copies. <laughs> I just keep writing. Anyways, so that was a, a, an introduction to mortality. And then what happened when my grandmother passed away, I had to come Allahabad for doing engineering. Mm -hmm. And I used to stay with my grandparents, again, the maternal grandparents, my nani and my nana. So we used to live in a house which was a stone throw distance away from Ganges. And I had such a fortune of living in that house. It was uh, just near to a bank, uh, uh, a ghat in Ganga. And I could see the vast uh, Ganges river in its all its fury from my balcony. Mm. And that's where my, uh, my nani, when she used to walk, dozens of small sparrows would come and sit on her hand on her shoulder on her head and she would just walk like a shrub wow. and with all these so many of my poems about birds are inspired by right. our, our, i wrote started writing this book in around 98 97 by the time uh, within two three years i could finish all the poems it took time for me to finish it ultimately and publish it seven years later but mm -hmm. these poems are uh, my youthful memories and my whatever was there around me when i was 20 year old 23 year old in that phase i used to see these bodies coming um, every day these arthis uh, in mm -hmm. processions mm -hmm. every day because the vidyut shabda Agre, the electric crematorium was right around the corner i have to right. take my cycle or a scooter every day from there right and then there were other events like there were people who would uh, take their small born uh, baby girls and leave uh, those girls uh, on the guards. And we would hear these news every three months or four months. I mean, life in all its beauty, mortality and whatever. And, thing, it, uh, and in its ugliness as well, I think. Ugliness, like uh, the, 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 the boats would capsize uh, uh, at nearby and we would get to know, oh my God, what happened here? all those types of things were happening and here I was going to my college every day yeah. and then being part of this uh, whole uh, uh, 
whole uh, milieu also where mortality was like just another thing like you eat and you also so see a dead body coming every day something like that and uh, i think that now is the time i would request you if you uh, don't mind to no, no, i would love to and it is a wonderful poem and uh, in hindi it was just called friend but i wanted to bring an element of uh, its whole uh, metaphysical narrative which is uh, which to me uh, sort of stood out because uh, uh, just calling it friend for me somehow was not enough i wanted to bring out this whole uh, uh, view of life the the way uh, the poet is seeing uh, the sea as the ultimate sort of uh, leveler of everyone uh, everyone who has ever been born because everything ultimately uh, seeps down into the sea the rain water carries even if you are buried the rain water carries some part of your uh, your body out into the sea so here is uh, the book uh, the poem which uh, also is uh, the title of this collection of poems uh, and the poem here uh, is simply called friend but the line from it has become the title uh, i like to wash my face with sea water I like to feel the salt spray on my face for a long time. I think a lot of people live inside the sea. Don't rivers take bones from the burnt fires down into the sea? They must all finally become salt. I often have the urge to speak to them. Who do those centuries old dead have to share their stories with? I wish I could fulfill all their desires and come to them. whenever they want me to i want to go far away from the shore into the sea many have sailed there on ships but i want to run and reach its untouched parts where they're sleeping in blue silence there i want to touch the things from their old lives with my warm living breath wow i would also like uh, you to read this uh, in hindi mitr मुझे समुद्र के पानी से मुंह धोने का बहुत मन होता है ऐसी इच्छा होती है कि देर तक नमक के थपेड़ों से चेहरे को सेकता रहूं। मुझे लगता है जैसे सागर के भीतर बहुत सारे लोग रहते हैं नदियों में घुली अस्थियां अंततः यहाँ ही तो आती होंगी आते आते सब बदल गई होंगी नमक में अक्सर मैं उन सब से बातें करना चाहता हूं सदियों से मौन थके मृतक कहा कह पाए होंगे किसी से अपनी निर्जीवता के सुख दुख मेरा मन होता है कि उन सब की इच्छाएं पूरी कर सकूं ऐसे जैसे वे जब भी अनुरोध करेंगे मैं उतर आऊंगा उनके पास मैं तट से दूर बहुत आगे तक जाना चाहता हूं पानी में ऐसे जहाज से तो सब जाते हैं मैं दौड़ कर भेदना चाहता हूं सागर अंदर की अनछुई जगहों पर नीली शांति में लीन उनके जीवन से जुड़ी बहुत सी चीजें हैं मैं हाफ कर उन्हें जीवित सांसों की गर्मी से जोड़ना चाहता हूं longing for uh, of a little boy who's uh, thinking of his grandparents who have already crossed over so to speak yeah. uh, and right. uh, uh, reaching out i i i really love that underlayer of uh, uh, this longing and desire to sort of uh, reach out and feel uh, if they are in pain to soothe it and if they are in uh, any sort of discomfort to sort of uh, allay that uh, it's it's very touching at one level of of this uh, uh, little boy or the still living person's desire to reach out to everyone who's crossed over thank you for uh, translating it i mean so soulfully i don't have words to describe your translation leaders oh, it is marvelous you. quite frankly Wonderful. i don't know how you got into the depth of those poems what i felt what i did not feel what was there between those lines everything you have caught so beautifully that's why this translation is in my opinion is a masterpiece quite oh, frankly thank you thank you i love this your work
I think uh, like you, uh, since you lived so close to uh, a place where uh, uh, sort of that uh, that was like a headquarter of uh, the end of life. For me, I grew up in a place where uh, uh, my mother used to work in a mental hospital. So I grew up in the compound where uh, a house was in the same compound. And it was also a very strange place for a child uh, of two or three to process. And uh, yeah. I, I stayed there from uh, beginning two years till 18. I finally left to go to another city. Uh, so it was a long, impressionable time that I spent there close to this uh, mental hospital. And uh, as you just said, it's difficult for a child to process because when he goes out into the so-called real world, uh, it becomes uh, 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 quite a challenge to sort of uh, be able to uh, understand, is this normal or is that normal? The, uh, the question of normality uh, is, uh, uh, is, very, uh, is very strong for, for a child to process. Uh, but at the same time, that uh, such sharp difference between uh, the outside novel and the inner novel that I was dealing with gave me a lot of sensitivity actually to, to understand lives that are not uh, like my own lives that are uh, so so far away it gave you it gives I think a life uh, like this an early childhood like that gives you uh, immense em empathy and immense uh, 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 regard to understand and uh, I think uh, it's very important for uh, uh, the creative uh, journey of any artist, of any artist, not just a poet, oh, uh, to, to uh, be able to uh, grasp that, to be able to touch upon that sort of very core of all existence without any uh, frills or without any uh, Absolutely. Uh, outside mm -hmm. layering. And which, which I think uh, both of us had, you had it uh, in your grandparents' house. Uh, and uh, I had it uh, where we were living, and uh, it uh, because I was seeing people who are not uh, who are not totally um, uh, all there. They had uh, they were physically fine, but uh, they had uh, mental troubles. A lot of them could see things which none of us could see. Uh, they could hear things which none of us could hear. So that itself, for a small uh, child to process, uh, becomes. Uh, becomes uh, interesting and also uh, scary sometimes because uh, you see a person standing in front of a wall and talking to that wall and just expecting you to sort of uh, respond to that. It is uh, not easy, but it is also, I think, uh, on hindsight, a lot of uh, uh, layers it gives you, uh, gives you understanding because you see what is there, but you also see what is not there or what could be there, what your imagination projects out. Uh, so that was interesting. Another yeah. thing which I found very uh, interesting and which is also very relevant to our times today is uh, this whole sense of loneliness that you have uh, 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 internalized one and then uh, used your imagination to, uh, to interpret that loneliness and a lot of time, a lot of uh, people these days are uh, processing that because we are, have been enforced in sort of, uh, uh, it's an enforced loneliness in a lot of people because of the pandemic that we are grappling with today. And I think um, because of that, this book becomes like an ideal uh, read for people uh, uh, sort of uh, being in a lockdown situation or being uh, confined to just their four walls of, of their homes. Um, because uh, you have been able to capture that sense. There is one particular uh, poem that I would like to read here. So uh, it's called Barter. And uh, you spoke to me today. It felt as if you laid all the flowers from your house at my doorstep. Tomorrow, I will talk to you and I will plant a thousand saplings in your courtyard. So I love this reciprocity that uh, the poet is feeling about someone who's just talked to him or reached out to him. And uh, uh, it is a conversation or it is the need for conversations that uh, we are feeling today more and more because of this um, isolation that has been imposed upon us. So I think it, it is wonderful. Yeah. So I wanted to share Thank that. One. What do you have to say about that? About this underlying sense of uh, isolation that you have tried to address in your poems? Isolation, which I have addressed so far, uh, differs from the isolation that we feel today because it also comes 
uh, with uh, with a mortal fear that we may not stay after this period this period can uh, devour us yes so it's slightly different uh, so all my earlier poems were uh, more like imaginations or feelings at personal level in relationships what happens all around and then i could draw some sense of uh, understanding what an isolation may mean but today it has become very different mm. we look around we look around people working in hospitals how they how they see these dead bodies going out from the covid wards hundreds and hundreds of them all around the world so things have really changed uh, in that sense i wrote a poem and i want to uh, uh, recite it and it's very recent poem okay. and it's it talks about that mortality that we feel and um, and uh, i want to do it in the middle because it has some elements which which creates some pain so after this poem we are only going to talk about happy things so okay. <laughs> with that note i i want absolutely. to really share this one yeah absolutely please uh, go ahead yeah from this isolation i have written this book uh, this mm-hmm. uh, poem mm-hmm. the title is panch tatva kahin dur ja ke dam todne ka man hota hai aise jaise kisi dusre desh mein kisi saaf sutri jagah par kisi hospital ya baagiche mein makan ki chhat par jahan se suraj dhoomil na dikhta ho us mulk mein jahan par kuch to hoga parthiv deh ka samman खाक में मिलाने को साजो सामान होगा आबो हवा होगी उसे विलीन कर लेने को यहां तो बहुत डर लगता है अंतिम यात्रा में यहां से वहां जाने का रास्ता निकलता है शहर के बीच की सकरी गलियों से कीचड़ और गंदगी के वेतान के इर्द गिर्द से जहां मानव खुद मिट प्राय देखते हैं मुझे अचेष्ट और मैं उन्हें छोड़ देता हूं वैसा ही अदमरा मात्र अपनी गति में रख शबों से बिछे हुए रास्ते इनके ऊपर से गुजरा मैं कितनी दफे और नहीं लौटना चाहा मैंने कभी भी फिर वहां मैं यह भी नहीं देख पाया कभी कि कौन मेरे साथ था जो छूट गया पीछे उसे मैंने गिरते और लड़खड़ाते हुए देखा था बस कभी सड़क पर दम तोड़ते हुए भीड़ भरी किसी बस के नीचे आकर बस उस बस में मैं कभी था कभी नहीं पर मैं जाना चाहता था किसी भी तरह उसे वहीं छोड़कर दूर मेरा दम घुटता है मुझे पता है मेरी उम्र कम हो चली है कोई कहता है मेरे खून में कुछ तो कालिक होगी वरना इतने धूल के गुबार इतनी उमस में मिलकर मेरे भीतर का रंग चितकबरा कैसे नहीं बना चुके हूं मैं आज आ चुका हूं पर सोचता हूँ यमुना के घाट के किनारे मुरझाए हुए फूलों और सीवर के पानी के बीच अपनी अस्थियां देखकर कितना और व्यथित हो जाऊंगा मैं मुझे कुछ तो जगह चाहिए कि मैं मुक्त होने के लिए पैर जमा सकूं उड़ सकूं दूर आकाश में अकेला दूर होना होता यदि इतना सरल तब यह चाह नहीं होती इतनी गहरी सबके पास फिर अचानक एक दिन उनसे दूर जिनके पास जीवन के सारे माने नहीं थे फिर भी जीवन से आगे तो मुझे उनके साथ नहीं रहना है ऐसे में एक आग्रह तो बनता है संबंधों के नाते जरा बहुत शांति की अपेक्षा में वे कुछ कर सकते हैं क्या मेरे लिए मेरी अंतिम इच्छा मानकर वे मेरे लिए ढूंढ में निकल सकते हैं कोई निर्मल स्थान वे मुझे कहीं किसी दूर तक फैली हरी घास में फैला सकते हैं अथवा किसी नदी के सबसे अगम स्थान पर पहुंचकर शुद्ध जल से आचवन करवा सकते हैं वे चाहें तो हेलीकॉप्टर से मेरी अस्थियां हिमालय के ऊपर ले जाकर बिखरा सकते हैं उन्हें पर टूटते तुषार नद मुझे वापस वहीं ले जाकर घोल देंगे जहां फैक्ट्रियों का तेजाब ढोती नदियां उन्हीं मरघटों को धोती हैं जहां वो मुझे वैसे ही जला सकते थे बिना किसी प्रयास के बिना शहर को छोड़े पर जहां मैं इतनी भारी ब्रिटिशना में भरा नहीं हो जाना चाहता बिली वो समुंदर भी ढूंढ सकते हैं रामेश्वरम या कन्याकुमारी जैसी जगह जहां से नाव कोई चले दूर चली जाए फिर 
मुझे जल समाधि देने को और शायद कुछ ठीक भी हो उन जगहों से दूर जहां मैं सिर्फ थोड़ी सी देर को गहरी सांस लेना चाहता था पर नहीं ले सका पर शायद मैं उन मछलियों के दांतों में फंस जाऊंगा लुप्त होने से पहले जो किसी ना किसी जहाज से रिश्ते तेल की झिल्ली में सनी उस कालिक को भीतर लिए फिर रही हैं जो मेरे अंदर उन्हें अंततः मिलेगी मैं इसलिए बहुत दूर जाना चाहता हूँ रूह के दूर जाने के उपरांत के पलों में अपनी देह के थोड़े से रख रखाव को किसी दूसरे लोक में नई नागरिकता के साथ ऐसे पलायन को सोचकर मन में बहुत दर्द होता है लगता है अभी दम टूट जाएगा खिड़की से बाहर सर निकाल कर देखता हूँ कहीं कोई बादल ही दिख जाए बरसात में दम टूटे जरा बहुत गनीमत तो होगी कहीं भी जलू मेरी गंध और राख कुछ दूर तक तो बहेगी कहीं तक तो पहुंचेगी शायद उन जगहों पर मेरे मुल्क की जिन्हें मैंने अभी तक नहीं देखा है और जहां आज भी पार्थिव शरीर पंच तत्वों में मिलते हैं ब्यूटिफुल of uh, this otherworldly element which is uh, which gives it a beautiful uh, layer and filter which which is really uh, amazing and all your poems have this birds eye view uh, feel to them that there is this bird flying above yes. uh, which is hovering over all different kinds of landscapes and uh, which is uh, privy to the conversations inside people's uh, houses inside people's heads so in many ways it's like this uh, supernatural bird which is flying above and recording so many things that are just floating above uh, uh, uh people's houses and it's uh, capturing all that recording all that and sort of uh, giving us a better perspective on on things and on life and because of that this birds eye view uh, poems that you have created uh, one can be transpro- transported for immediately from kanpur to uh, japan or from uh, banaras to uh, somewhere else in the world timbuktu uh, i think that quality is uh, really amazing and it brings a certain uh, cosmopolitanism uh, in uh, in uh, hindi poetry which one has not seen so much which is uh, which makes your your work uh, so alive and relevant and uh, sort of uh, it breaks down borders uh, of so called uh, hindi uh, hindi poetry or the perception of people having about hindi poetry that hindi poetry is only about uh, india but you have taken that all over the world because of your uh, your perspective i want i now i want to ask a few questions to you and i know you you have been um, uh, making this uh, lockdown uh, for all of us a lot of fun okay and uh, i watch your videos on twitter and many places where you are cooking some very exotic never heard of dishes and at the same time i heard that you are also finishing up your uh, next book and uh, so on both counts i want to know more about that first i want to know how you can combine a mango with a mirchi or chili and uh, still make a dessert yeah. uh, that looks very cool so i want to talk to you about that yeah so the food videos i started making only during the lockdown in fact they are called lockdown chef videos uh, on youtube and uh, the thing is i always like cooking uh, and as a result always like uh, eating but my uh, my love for cooking is not just uh, eating quantities or eating to sort of uh, uh, satiate that uh, feeling of uh, Uh, it's not out of greed is what i want to say i'm not a glutton but uh, it's also tasting uh, the the fineness of flavors because flavors like colors if uh, i'm i can give a analogy between art and food um, flavors are also very fine and they're also very uh, sometimes uh, difficult to uh, pinpoint uh, so uh, there is uh, this whole spectrum of colors so there are different shades of gray or different shades of uh, reds there are different tones and different uh, 
uh, and each tone or each hue makes you feel differently and i think mm-hmm. uh, similar is the, the the fact with food every flavor or every uh, flavor is there for a particular urge or feeling that we have and that particular flavor uh, is the only one which can satisfy that urge that is why we have cravings and uh, that is why we crave for something at a particular mo- moment because that that craving or that flavor is the only thing that can satisfy what we are feeling internally and mentally so my food videos are a lot about that and lockdown mm-hmm. has sort of enforced uh, this uh, sense of being inside and no not knowing what to do so i started making these food videos where i combined a lot of flavors from my childhood uh, my growing up years with uh, something totally unremoved and totally exotic uh, uh, to my present uh, state and uh, i would like people to feel the joy of combining such uh, unknown or untested or un uh, uh, unforeseen uh, flavors and tastes and uh, the mango chocolate chili mousse that you're talking about uh, comes from a place like that because uh, uh, mango is very uh, desi and it's a very uh, much loved uh, in india kind of fruit uh, which we i think 90% of us love um, and uh, chocolate is uh, it has that layer of uh, being uh, not from the outside and yeah. stuff um, and chili too though chili has been totally uh, internalized and uh, indianized but it is still from mexico so i wanted to combine these three and see how uh, how uh, it helps us sort of uh, recover from the despondency that we are feeling uh, and uh, uh, the way people responded to that video i'm sure it helped them uh, a lot because i'm combining favorite flavors of a lot of people because mango then chocolate uh, and chili a lot of uh, indians love chili so uh, these are favorite fla- flavors from much of our, our subcontinent and uh, i try to combine them and uh, the effect uh, of it was uh, quite surprising for me as well because uh, when you see people respond to a certain work of, like, like a food video is also work um, of of art and uh, people uh, uh, respond to it and you feel happy that okay it, it has touched people somewhere another project that i just finished before the lockdown was a book a biography actually of right. um, uh one of the oldest uh, art galleries in india which is dhumi mal so uh mm-hmm. it also had the first uh, uh woman director uma ji who was uh, who's also had a very interesting life she was actually a lawyer a supreme court lawyer who uh, married into this art family eventually and uh, after her husband who was the director passed away she became the director so uh by being a top notch lawyer of the country uh, she became a top notch uh, art gallery owner of the country wow. so it's a very uh, layered life where she had right. to uh, first she was trying to make her own space uh, in the legal profession because these these were still the early days and there were not many lawyer, women lawyers uh, in the supreme court she was trying to make a space for herself there and uh, then as a uh, in, in the artistic profession also she had to make uh, her own uh, name and standing and to take the gallery forward from where Uh, she had acquired it after her husband's uh, early death so it's a, it's a very interesting life and uh, shortly that book would be coming out uh, it's wow. done I've, i've submitted the whole uh, manuscript uh, and uh, then of course i'm working on my novel which has been like yes. a long term project uh, it's still evolving and going in different directions a work of art can be really mm. really messy at times because uh, it's like this uh, 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 unruly octopus that you're trying to put in a box and uh, why i'm saying octopus because it has so many appendages yeah, coming out yeah. and uh, it's uh, spilling over and the octopus is also trying to get out of the box and it's it's such a challenge to sort of fit that octopus in the box and right oh, absolutely and uh, so i don't know when that will finish but i hope to use this uh, period yeah. of uh, uh, lockdown right. and staying in those to sort of uh, finish that so i'm keeping my fingers crossed i i love this uh, uh, aspect of uh, subtle humor which you've also brought out and i would love, like to share it because let's not keep the uh, despair uh, <laughs> give it a, give the despair oh, a breather absolutely absolutely so this the one is called I... prologue yeah uh, i have a chinese friend yeah. whose eyes 
can hold the full mood in its fullness. She you now she often asks me in anger, why do people say that all Chinese look the same? I make a serious face and begin to explain. These people don't know anything. It's not just the Chinese, even the Japanese look the same. <laughs> Which I really find this line really nice. Yeah. My answer makes her laugh slowly and then mm -hmm. fully taking the redness of her cheeks to the corner of her eyes. Right. Last time when she got pregnant, her husband spent a lot of money to take her back to China. When she returned, she had in her arms a cute baby boy. She said her mother and sister were thrilled to see her and her brother, who's tall and handsome, did a special costume dance for her. She often laughs. After completing her sentences, I find her laughter very familiar. Perhaps everybody looks the same when they laugh. This is my 12th year, uh, 12th year completed outside India. So I'm, uh, just recently I moved into my 13th year. First eight years I spent in the United States, mm -hmm. then came to Bangalore for about six years. Then again, so in Saudi Arabia, I have completed four years. So my life, almost all my adult life, I have been surrounded by people from multiple ethnicities, multiple countries, belief systems, food habits. And that has changed me, altered me for better. And I have friends uh, in, uh, in Chinese people, in Pakistani people, uh, let alone Americans, Europeans, South Americans, Africans, whom I love as if I love you, Dheeraj, or anybody else. Right. There is no difference. I would say absolutely no difference. And uh, they come to our house, even uh, here in uh, where we live in Saudi Arabia. Uh, people from uh, Pakistani origin deliver us food here in lockdown. Mm. And uh, I have people from China in my team. Mm. And I love them. I don't know how people can differentiate at the level of people. Right. It just blows my mind. Right. And uh, this is one of my first friend who, uh, and when I was doing my PhD, so about whom I wrote in this po uh, in mm. poem. Actually, I wrote a story also on okay. my uh, with my uh, for uh, the encounter with Chinese people in my lab. I called this Pehli Chini Ki Mithas. <laughs> Nice. So she was the first Chini, uh, Chinese friend. So right. Pehli Chini ke friend. Uh, now I have many Chinese <laughs> friends. So a lot of uh, sweet things around. So, um, well, this is what it is. I mean, at right. some level, we have to recognize we inherit this world together. Right. And though the, uh, I, I see there's people confused with regimes and governments with the people of the country. Right. Like, let's bulldoze Pakistan, let's bomb Pakistan, let's right. bomb China. What is this? Right. I don't understand these kinds of feelings ever. Right. Or people from uh, Mumbai not liking people from Bihar and like... I mean, no, but the surprising thing people. is that uh, like uh, once I was uh, between... Uh, uh, there was a stopover mm -hmm. at uh, one airport. I think it was, uh, 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 it was in Jordan and... Uh, right. Uh, we were going to Europe, so there was a stop over there and uh, it was uh, slightly longer than expected because there was, there was some delay between the flights, so we had to stay overnight. And uh, I was looking around for people to talk to and familiar people and familiar. So there was a group of people who were talking um, Hindi or Urdu or our language, Hindustani. So I went to them and we started chatting and... Uh, so it turns out they were Pakistanis. So the <laughs> yeah. closest people that you can find yeah. uh, from your milieu uh, as Indians outside the, the, the country is uh, are Pakistanis because especially for North Indians because we speak a similar uh, language uh, and uh, it is. Uh, but 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 we are also going through right now uh, a phase uh, in uh, not just India but across the world in a lot of uh, uh, right wing. Uh, per paranoia and parochialism yeah. about looking inside and being of one type and being of one um, race or being of one uh, faith or being of one uh, belief system and which is which is really disturbing but a lot of uh, people uh, or a lot of uh, majoritarian groups are sort of loving this sort of 
these sort of regimes and I find it really disturbing because uh, across the world we are seeing this kind of uh, paranoia about the other because uh, people like you and I, people who, who are creative, we love the other. We just love whoever is different from us or whoever uh, is um, uh, far removed from context uh, from us. But yeah. right now, the climate or the, uh, the mood of the world seems to be just looking inward and being as, as withdrawn from the other as possible, which is uh, which uh, I find really, really upsetting and disturbing. Uh, what is your experience? So, uh, this, this is true, it's happening. What I have felt in my own family, friend circle in India, uh, there is a lot which has changed in their minds. When I go to India these days, almost 9 out of 10 people, they start with something with Hindu Muslim and end with something with Hindu right, Muslim. Right. I am never comfortable with that. And I've stopped going to uh, uh, my friends, calling them because I don't want to get into that environment. To right. Poison myself, my children. So it is happening. What has happened is, uh, in my opinion, the identities are getting hardened, mm. so that they are uh, they are telling us that hey, you are you belong to this. Mm. This is your glorious past within this space, and rest everything is. They are outsiders. They 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 are there to take your rights away, right. your wealth away. And, and you write so beautifully, Dheeraj, uh, and I, I believe I have so much respect for you, Sahar, and people of uh, your caliber and uh, your fraternity media who mm. are who are taking this head on. I mean, you are just taking this might of this whole system. Yeah. And uh, for us, we are far away. We, we express our thoughts in poems and things like that. Right. But you guys are right there. Right, right. And I, I also feel because uh, uh, we have the wherewithal to express ourselves, to, to be able to write. And if we keep quiet at this time now, I think we would be doing a lot of injustice to, uh, to the future, uh, to our future generations. Because uh, we, uh, we have to, uh, I, I believe very strongly that we have to, uh, fight this at uh, whatever level or whatever uh, way we can. So uh, yeah, I, I have begun to make a lot of memes and I, I express myself in memes because yeah. they're short and uh, sometimes humorous and sometimes biting in their criticism of the present uh, regime. We, uh, so uh, it becomes very important to do that because uh, uh, we have to stand up for what we have always believed uh, in uh, uh, the, the real uh, true character of, of our country and uh, we cannot let that pass into the hands of someone who's uh, oh, so is. so so desperate and so hell-bent to, 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 to just cut it off and make people forget uh, what uh, what the founders of India or the founders the founders the constitutional founders the Ambedkars the Gandhis yes Nehru, had in mind the when they, they wanted exactly. they were fighting for they, freedom they were fighting for um, uh, Swaraj, what what they really had in mind, and that I would never want to sort of uh, fade out. So uh, it is a tough battle. Uh, it is a tough battle uh, because we are faced with a lot of fakery and fake news and uh, yeah. and uh, and facts taken out of context. We all do it in a different way. Some most yeah. of our, us go through memes and comments and posts, yeah. which are also funny and they make people look at the other side at the. Uh, at, the, at what is actually wrong and what is being said. A, a lot of time, our governments are lying to us all the time. They're saying things which absolutely are not true. They are, uh, they are fabricated, they have sexed up uh, data, sexed up facts and figures, everything. So we have to look beyond that. And, and my ability to sort of read between the lines um, helps me here, is helping me here to sort of um, uncover those. One thing is they want to change our DNA from yes. what our forefathers um, uh, put inside and what they want to change it with something else. They want to Absolutely. Uh, mutate They want to do in, this, uh, yeah. this uh, sort of uh, surgical intervention. They want to uh, yeah. uh, play with your DNA. Actually, they want yeah. to play with your DNA. And uh, of course, it's difficult to play with the DNA of people who are already mature. But you can right. definitely play with the DNA of people Absolutely. who are not yet born, and uh, yeah. uh, and that that is the that is the most dangerous thing that uh, uh, you are spoiling it for people people who are uh, much smaller right now who are not yet born because they will believe everything that you have sort of normalized Absolutely. in all these uh, uh, 
the years that you have been in power. Um, I would like to mention here this uh, wonderful work that I translated. Uh, it's uh, it's called Jisne Lahore Nahi Dekhiya Wo Jan Mein. Yeah, Azgar Wajahat's beautiful play that uh, that uh, actually began my journey of translations. That was the first that I translated, and uh, I used to uh, I was uh, helping out in this magazine called the Little Magazine, uh, and uh, uh, Andra Devsen who was uh, editing it, she said that. Uh, Uh, why don't you translate? Because you come from Lucknow, so you obviously have it in you to translate. <laughs> yeah, I didn't absolutely. recognize it, but she <laughs> saw it better. So I said, "Okay, let yeah. me give it a try." So I gave it a try, and it came out wonderfully. Even uh, Asghar Saab, who's a, uh, who's um, also our neighbor in Noida, yeah. uh, he read it and he was really happy with the translation. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, that is a beautiful story in itself. The play is about a, a family that is a, 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 that. A, Uh, it is set in the partition, so our family goes from Lucknow to uh, Lahore, mm-hmm. and uh, it's resettled there in an old uh, haveli which belonged to a, a Hindu uh, businessman. Mm-hmm. So everyone has left for India, and this, similarly, this family has gone from Lucknow, and uh, they're settling in there. But gradually, they find that there is another uh, presence in the house, and it's uh, it's occupied in one of the top uh, portraits mm-hmm. of the haveli, mm-hmm. and. Uh, there they, they discover that this old uh, dadima who is so uh, so so passionately uh, uh, bound to the city of lahore so passionately mm-hmm. tied to that haveli that she has refused to leave so her whole family mm-hmm. has left but she's the right. only one there wow. and uh, she says uh, all these things have changed i don't care for the world i don't care for how mm-hmm. people think and how people are at each other's throat but i love the city this is my city i have Decide, and this is my home. You guys have come here. Uh, mm. Please let me stay uh, here for whatever time I have now, and uh, let us coexist. So it's a, a beautiful tale of how, gradually, the initial response of the family that has come from Lucknow is uh, like a, a hostility. But gradually, they see her presence and they come to wow. love her, uh, and eventually, uh, they they also uh, uh, take up uh, hostility from the neighbors who have. Discovered that there's this um, woman who's living in this house and uh, she's not welcome. But the new owner fights for her, and eventually, mm-hmm. when he dies, uh, when she dies, um, they, they they have to cremate her according to the Hindu yeah. customs. They want to uh, cremate wow. her. Amazing. So uh, uh, there is the Malvi who says uh, that uh, yes. uh, they can't find a Hindu yes, uh, priest uh, to do the rituals. So the Malvi says that. Uh, Okay, uh, she uh, was uh, because our faith also tells us that we have to uh, respect other people's tradition. I yeah. will uh, uh, sort of uh, preside over her uh, cremation. So the Malvi uh, presides over the cremation, and because uh, this whole uh, case has gained so much uh, light of the politicians and the, uh, of the local goons, um, uh, the, eventually after. He's cremated, and everyone is saying Ram Ram Satya Hai, Ram Ram Satya Hai. Who her Arthi? The local goon is so incensed with the Malvi for doing something which is so uh, so uh, out, uh, so unexpected of a Malvi that he murders the Malvi. So the uh, the goon ultimately uh, mm-hmm. kills the Malvi. So uh, it, it's also a story of how uh, strong our tactics and how the uh, criminal elements in society sort of gain an upper hand because. People who should have spoken out, or uh, who uh, have uh, the power to uh, to correct things, uh, stayed silent. So uh, it's it's a beautiful work, and it has uh, Asghar Saab wrote it in I think um, in the 70s, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, it's done a lot of. Uh, uh, it has had a lot of productions all across yeah. the world, and it's one of his right. best. Best known play. Wow! Amazing. And, and with your your work, I've uh, turned a new leaf by translating uh, uh, poems. So that's uh, that's another translation milestone. Actually. Wow! Amazing. And, and with your your work, I've uh, turned a new leaf by translating uh, uh, poems. So that's uh, that's another translation milestone. Uh, and there is one more thing that I would like to ask you. You have also um, brought out uh, uh, an audio book of your poems, which yes. has been. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, voiced by one one very famous voice, which we all know as uh, Main Samay Hoon of uh, the Mahabharat <laughs> fame, uh, yeah. Harish Bhimani ji. So tell us about right. that. Uh, you know, uh, Hindi poem has become uh, sort of a very 
rare art i would say not many people follow poetry these days and I, in my mind i was thinking what is the best way to bring it out more prominently in front of people right and uh, on one idea was for translation i went to you mm. translation opens the door for the rest of the world english right. is essentially a word language so and then the next thing is the swar the awaz now mm. we recognize things not because a lyricist has uh, written those but mostly because somebody has sung those Sanger. you see yeah you, uh, you, you have a close proximity to one of the great singers uh, of past time uh, yeah. talat mahmood sahab yes. uh, and uh, you know uh, we remember songs because of talat mahmood of yes. course there were great poets at that time sahil ludhianvi shailendra neeraj many others but so that's why i thought well, how can i take this work to the next level and right. that's where i reached out to uh, harish vimani ji who was very gracious the uh, other book he did was for harman hesse who was a uh, nobel laureate right. he wrote the siddhartha right. and the next book he did mine i mean this one ek uh, swapna drishta ka romanticism and the uh, next one is the our book yes so it's already is, been done and yes, we I'm are really looking waiting. forward to that that yeah. is because uh, uh, arish bimani ji is amazing in hindi and in english he's got this wonderful uh, voice which has uh, this wonderful bass and uh, it sounds yeah. so so beautiful and so evocative and uh, i think uh, growing up that uh, uh, mahabharat the uh, opening uh, yeah. sequence of with his voice about mai samay was so so it worked on so many levels in your mind that uh, time is talking to you actually which, uh, which absolutely and uh, uh, this one uh, uh, i like to wash my face with sea water should be available as a audio book on all online channels within a month or so awesome. so we awesome. are just waiting to launch that there were few technical things so and i'm glad uh, you, yeah. you think in so many uh, different ways uh, uh, because uh, it's important these days for all creators to uh, uh, reach out to as many people uh, because there are so many different platforms earlier people uh, like the artist was just creating in his studio or the writer was just sitting in his house on his table and desk writing but right now you can there's so many different way, ways to reach out uh, to uh, audiences newer people uh, people you would have, wouldn't have imagined otherwise i wouldn't have imagined What? getting a comment from someone sitting in uh, portugal or peru or um, north america or africa Absolutely. nowadays you get you know uh, people commenting on your work from anywhere i mean so which is really brilliant uh, one of the good things that are uh, sort of uh, firing up I, and fueling our times before we close i want to talk about sheila brown whose painting is uh, the cover painting so yes. i connected uh, with her uh, over internet i was always fascinated by her painting and i wrote to her can you give me one painting for my cover and uh, she was very gracious uh, artist she uh, gave me this um, a pigeon uh, peaceful flight the name of the uh, painting is there is a beautiful story behind it uh, we all know the christchurch killings happened a few years new ago yes, yes in new zealand fanatics opened fire on a yes. mosque killed many people so entire new zealand was stunned and she was like completely broken on that afternoon she went out and she saw this pigeon flying over her garden kitchen, uh, kitchen garden and mm -hmm. she started painting this so if you see uh, the beak of uh, the pigeon has a red uh, color tint right, over it right, yeah right. so it is actually kind of a blood that is coming out from the pigeon mm -hmm. and uh, and so i dedicated this uh, book to uh, to to sheila and also um, uh prime minister of uh, new zealand jacinda yes yeah jacinda ardern and uh, she is uh, one phenomenal leader and uh, doing doing very well and when there is depravity of leadership all around we find in a country like new zealand yes, such a yes, absolutely. dynamic leader is there absolutely so, there are a lot of uh, people who are uh, all praises for the kind of leadership shown by uh Jacinda and a lot of women leaders actually have uh, sort of uh, oh, absolutely. stood up uh, uh, against this whole uh, uh fight against uh, uh a kind of uh, um 
parochial uh, right wing kind of thinking yes. uh, and and which is great because uh, i think a lot of people uh, uh, what she did after the uh, uh, the, uh, the firing in the new zealand was also great she uh, went oh, yeah. to the mosque and sort of uh, personally ensured that people felt safe in new zealand which was wonderful to see which was really uh, nice and uh, and we have wished this from our leader in india to do that uh, when the That's delhi programs uh, when the delhi riots happened and the, um, there was so much um, uh, so much evidence uh, how people in uh, power or the party in power uh, is involved uh, behind it but somehow that never came up they never never came up in the charge sheets that have been filed um, Two three months after, and it's still a uh, prolonged battle. And a lot of people who are totally innocent and totally um, uh, framed uh, in these uh, uh, riots have been uh, put behind bars, which is really unfortunate. So right now we are going through a very um, sad time where uh, the government is using everything under its power to uh, muzzle uh, dissent, uh, independent uh, uh, opinions. it just wants a particular narrative to sort of uh, be the dominant narrative which is which is really unfortunate but uh, we all uh, strive in our own small uh, yeah. ways to sort of uh, stand up stand up to uh, injustice and uh, stand up to um, to uh, stand up for uh, what we believe is the way a country a great diverse and beautiful country like ours should go titu i'm fully with you what you said <laughs> so wonderful samitra it was wonderful having you on this uh, show and talking to you about your book and uh, uh, i wish you uh, the very our best uh, in for our book <laughs> <laughs> i wish you the very best uh, for uh, your coming projects and uh, yes. we hope to see uh, more of your works uh, going out into the world and sort of uh, um, being appreciated by people who uh, like poetry and who like uh, different takes on things which which is very valuable in times like this and and uh, all the very best thank you so much dheeraj i really appreciate you calling me here and i wish you luck and uh, the same what you have wished to me i <laughs> give you thank you so much dheeraj thank you take care bye bye take care bye bye